Hello everybody and welcome to this automotive technology video. My name is Nick Dimitrakopoulos and today we are going to talk about the Open Alliance TC9 1000 base T1 sealed twisted pair uh, testing requirements. For this reason I have invited my colleague Jorn Pfeiffer. Jorn, thanks for joining me. Hello Nick. And also you are uh, representing Roden Schwarz in the technical committee nine of the Open Alliance. Yes. So you are really the right person to talk about uh, this today. Um, the video we did before was talking about the unsealed twisted pair, the UTP. And now we will show today the sealed twisted pair for 1000 base T1. Uh, are there any differences compared to the previous one? Yeah, there are several things that, which are very similar. So we should do a return loss and insertion loss measurements and as well uh, characteristic impedance measurements over time. And of course, mode conversion measurements. Uh, but one thing is different to the unshielded twisted pair specification, and that's um, the way how to perform the, the inline connector test here. So we should test this inline connector pair, this mated connector pair, and we should do it with the help of de-embedding. Okay, so what does this uh, de-embedding do for us? Yeah, we can show some uh, pictures from the TC9 spec. Let's have a look. So. We want to get rid of the influence of the adapter boards and the cables and measure only the, the device under test, which is the mated connector pair. Uh, to do this, we need uh, the setup on the right side for the inline connector test. But first, we need to measure the setup on the left, which is called the coupon measurement, with only the adapter boards and one cable. The length of this cable is chosen in a way that half the length corresponds to the length up to the DOT here on the right side. And in the third step, the software creates S-parameter sets 1 and 2, like you see in the picture on the right side, and de-embeds them so that we have only res the result of the DOT left. Okay, so I see here today you have brought with you the ZNB8 VNA, and uh, let's have a look on the VNA settings according to this TC9 specification. Okay, so Jorn, what is the first thing that we have to do before we get started with the measurement? Okay, th first thing, like always with the VNA measurements, is uh, calibration. I've done that before with this automatic calibration unit. And uh, what you see here now is the measurement of the whole structure. So both adapter boards and the two cables with the inline connector. I can show you the, the open connector here and close it once again. So uh, at the moment, you see we're doing the measurement of the whole structure and we see the results. So the insertion loss is much too high, the return loss fails as well, and um, the, the propagation delay, which is in fact the length of the whole structure, is of course much uh, longer than, than only this um, connector pair, so it fails as well. Um, so what we then do is that we go to the de-embedding menu and we open that by going to the going to the appropriate menu and activate the de-embedding here so that we can run the, the de-embedding tool. We here work with the in situ de-embedding tool from Atitech, which is a partner company. And so we have implemented this software completely into our firmware. And like shown in the in the slides, we have a three-step process. So the first step uh, is to measure the coupon, which would be a cable like this here. Um, and the alternative is just to load up the file. I've done that before this measurement. And so you can uh, load up as well if you've done before. I load it from the menu. So you see it's done. And then you perform the measurement of the whole structure, the DOT and the test fixtures. And then in the end, here you run the software. Okay, now we see the software is done with the calculations and you can press apply. Yeah. Okay, now you see the de-embedding uh, does work and we have only the results left of the mated connector pair. So down here we see the uh, insertion loss, which is very low now because it's only the insertion of, of the loss of the mated connector pair. 
And um, on the top left here, you see the, uh, the return loss. And you can see very nice that the ripple is gone. So that's the effect of the de-embedding that we have the uh, return loss characteristics of the adapter boards calculated out. So we don't have the ripple anymore. We have a very nice curve here. And we have the characteristic impedance where you see only the, uh, the impedance of the connector. And you see that here, down here, where should be the, the second adapter board, yet you don't see any impact. You see the reference impedance here. So the de-embedding did work very, very good. Um, so, and as well, the propagation delay, which is the length of the, of the measurement object, the measurement, um, uh, the, the device under test, uh, you can see that's below the limit line as well. So it's very, very short, which is just the adapter, the mated adapter pair here. Jorn, this really worked like magic, and I really like this step-by-step -step approach of the in-situ de-embedding. Can a user really look what is happening on the background of this measurement process? Yes, the, the user is still uh, under full control of what's happening because he can always go into the de-embedding menu, and here you can see what's happening. Uh, like you've seen in the in the slide, uh, these are S parameter sets one and S parameter set two. So these represent the adapter boards and the cables. And uh, by uh, unchecking these boxes, you can uh, deactivate the de-embedding again and have the measurement result of the full structure again. I see. And you have also set some uh, limit lines. I guess these are given by the TC9 test specification. So let's have a look on this spec. Okay, so now how uh, does a user define those limit lines? How can we load this up into the instrument so we know what is passing and what is failing? Yes, the user can create its own uh, limit lines in the define limit lines menu. And you see it here from in the frequency ranges and you can um, make formulas as well, like you see here for the insertion loss. Jorn, that was really great, thank you. But last question before we finish. If somebody wants to do these measurements for the TC9, what would you recommend is the optimum configuration in terms of uh, hardware, software, and accessories? So uh, you need a vector network analyzer, ZNB8, and you need a hardware option, that's the B54, the extended dynamic range that helps uh, with the measurements. And you need cables, of course, you need uh, phase-stable cables that you can do uh, the measurements very precisely and a calibration unit or a manual calibration kit like you see here. And what you need as well for the impedance measurement, you need the time domain option K2. Thank you so much, Jorn. That was very useful. So make sure that you Follow our Automotive Ethernet solution page for more. I will see you next time. Until then, stay safe and healthy. Goodbye. Goodbye.